Welcome to this week's shooting show. Um, we're in Argyle on early red stags and I'm actually testing in the field the new Beretta rifle, the BRX-1. Yeah, I've been testing the uh, new rifle uh, produced by Beretta, uh, which is their entry into the kind of sporting rifle world. Um, my brief really was to get it out in the field from a, a stalking perspective, an in the field test. So I wanted to test it on Roebuck's in Ayrshire and also on, on Red Stags. And the Red Stag test we've just done, which is on this package, and for that I went down into Argyle. Now it's basically a straight pull rifle, synthetic stock, the calibre was 308. Very, very accurate out of the box, and but this was really the first um, test in anger, if you like. inside the deer fence. She'll have a kid um, somewhere in there. First session out, um, it was very calm, very still, and there was a there was a front blow, and you could actually see it coming in from the from the sea. So we 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 did stalk, and I you know tried to sort of get into something. Saw a few deer, horrendous. The black flies were horrendous, just making it incredibly uncomfortable. Um, so we really didn't get much success at all, and in, in the lower areas. So we went up onto the high ground to try and get into some wind and some, some bit, a bit of cooler conditions, which to be fair is probably where the deer would head for. Um, and see if we could find any sort of reds up there.
almost stuck with him anyway. That's exactly where you'd be laid down, isn't it? Come down into our uh, guy on early stag, well that was the plan. All we've seen is hinds, but we had to come out early. I mean, it's, it, it's a bit early really for stalking at this time of year. The deer will probably not move until quite a bit later, but there's a real bad front coming in. It's just starting to come now. Um, it's going to be torrential, so we thought we'd have an hour or two early doors, just have a bit of a recce. We're going to try again in the morning, very early, but again, I think we're going to be snookered with the weather, but it is what it is. But I think we've probably seen about 40 odd hinds, 50 hinds, a nice little roebuck down there, which was nice. A kid from this year. Uh, but the stags were, the stags at this time of year push up onto the high ground and we've got good feeding down here so it's the hinds that are holding it with the calves. Um, but you never know, you can try and get a yearling or a knobber from the edge of the group. Um, so tomorrow's another day, it's a pity because we've got the, the, the Beretta BRX uh, uh, I and I want to BRX1 even. I want to try that on reds, I mean we shot a roebuck with it um, a few days ago so I'd like to christen it on a, on a red stag but I've got to find one first, and that's why I'm struggling out at the minute. Anyway, we're going to head for home before this lot torrential hits us. Okay, so we've got um, there's some a group of deer feeding down below us on the silage field, and they're sort of drifting back up in front of us into the wood in cover. It's quite windy. It's just been a real nasty squall actually, but we just shot a, a, a younger stag here down about 180 yards away down below us um, in a lot of thick cover actually, um, and there's a big lad down there, quite unconcerned, just going about his morning munching. Um, that's a lovely stag actually. Big lad. So we've got a pretty awkward uh, clamber now down a sheer face to try and recover this. Okay, it's cracking morning. Um, typical Argyle we've had. It's been horrendous. It's brightened up now. Um, we've got torrential rain this morning with a lot of hinds coming in but that's kind of traditional for this area because there's a lot of good feeding here so the hinds tend to hold the the feeding but one of the farmers mentioned there have been quite a few stags doing some damage down on some silage fields across the road. That's actually not ours but this ground is and they're, they're working back uh, coming back into the woodland so um, having had no success sort of across on the the forest area we came along to try and intercept them coming in and, and sure enough they started sort of funneling up i just managed to catch them as they were coming up through the wall and it really awkward tricky <laughs> shooting position from kind of on my tiptoes nearly from right up there kind of looking downhill through some bracken but we just got a nice gap um, and i'd only got the got the neck so um what i wanted to do was was test the brx uh, one on a Bretta BRX one on a red deer and uh, I mean 308 caliber it's not the caliber I use a lot actually but I mean it's ideal for woodland reds this perfect um, neck shot um, from downhill so deer instantly dead come straight through the spinal column nice young nice young stag you see there there's some really good stags so this is one I wanted to take out of the group anyway um, but the rifle performed beautifully actually it's this is the conditions that a professional stalker has to contend with we can't pick and choose our weather so it's absolutely it's lovely it's fine now but flipping heck I mean, we're drenched uh, horrendous couldn't even see at one point um, and i think that's why the deer started moving in early but fortunately it just cleared enough for us but um 
when you're in these sort of conditions you want a robust rifle which is why I'm a great fan of the cutter synthetic stock but this really handles well there's a nice lot of weight to this rifle it's, it's in about seven pound just over seven pound and so when you're shooting off sticks from a not a bench rest position clearly you want that for stability so um, that's a Roebuck um, and a Red Stag now shot with the rifle um, which has impressed me enormously fortunately we can get a bike into here um, because we've got a nice quad access track so I'm going to do a gallop on, on this and then we'll uh, we'll recover it. Nice stag, uh, good condition, lovely summer coat. I mean they're in super nick here, they've got loads of food, I mean we've got access to the grass fields, they've got access to the to the woodland, which to the foresters consternation so to keep on top of them. So I think a wet morning but uh, I would probably describe it as a successful morning. Now comes the hard work. Hello, I'm Chris Parkin and I'm out tonight for some rabbits and possibly some hares. I'm using the new Bagara BMR, which is the Bagara Micro Rimfire, and this one's in 2-2. I very stupidly forgot to put a sling on the rifle this evening. Oops. The bolt shows twin extractor claws and being a manual ejector relies on the enthusiasm with which you cycle the bolt handle to dictate how far it spits out the spent brass. Here you can see the bolt release lever on the left side of the rear action bridge. All ammunition clips into a single column from the top and you can have 5 or 10 round magazines. Secure studs are fitted front and rear on the underside of the stock for a sling or bipod. The muzzle is screw cut half inch by 28 for a moderator or muzzle brake. I was very impressed with how crisp the trigger was and it's also adjustable. The trigger is a single stage unit and on this one breaks 873 grams, which is one pound 14.8 ounces. I think those are a little bit too far away for a 2-2 two -two in fire. Performance from all the RWS ammunition used was ultra reliable with no failures to feed, extract or eject. This rifle's come with a 10 round magazine, 5 rounds are also available and the magazine release on the front of the trigger guard is ambidextrous and you can see just how quick and easy it is to swap magazines and there's no fumble, it doesn't jam going into the port and of course it will drop cleanly out under its own weight as well. The grey polymer stock carries a black speckled finish throughout. It doesn't resonate through recoil and it also doesn't make excess noise if bumped or banged on foliage when carried. The extended bolt handle operated smoothly throughout the test. There were no jams or misfeeds with any ammunition whatsoever. The barrel fully free floats and the forehand is stiff enough that you don't get intermittent contact when handling the rifle. The rifle is supplied with a 30 MOA inclination Picatinny or Weaver rail for scope mounting to give long range potential. Although this is the micro action for Bagara, this is still compatible with any Remington 700 type trigger. The two position safety catch locks the trigger forward for firing and it can operate silently. Stippling is inlaid on the forend for extra grip. There's a similar pattern for the firing hand to hold on to. 
The underside of the stock shows a precision manufactured component for the magazine well inlet. The stock inlet shows no bedding stress whatsoever with the action screwed in place. You can see the barrel fitting into the action and the Remington 700 compatible trigger unit. This is very much a practical hunting rifle with a tough stock that will stand up to day to day use without showing the marks like a fine walnut stock would. Overall weight is 5.5 pounds or 2.5 kilograms. Overall length is 36 inches or 915 millimeters. The 4140 grade steel barrel is blued finished and it's a number four taper with a matched chamber. Available as 18 inch in 22LR or 20 inch in 17 HMR or 22WMR, the twist rates are a 1 in 16 for the 22 calibers or a 1 in 9 for a 17 HMR. I love the fact the rifle is ambidextrous and in a dynamic hunting scenario it's great to be able to switch shoulders to make the most of the support structure available. Well, we've had a few successful evenings out with the Bagara BMR. I especially like it. It's very light, handy. It's got a slightly longer bolt handle, which is a little bit more modern, nice modern safety catch as well. It's not quite as bulky as some of the Remington 700 size action Bagara rimfires. So I think doing the micro rimfire has been a great advantage for them. It's everything you need, nothing you don't need. It's a fully floating barrel, so you've got complete reliability from all sorts of positions, whether they're standing, kneeling, sitting, prone, whatever, from sticks even. The recoil pad doesn't need to accept a lot of recoil, but it certainly grips well into your shoulder and having a weaver rail included with the rifle makes it very easy when you need to mount larger scopes, particularly things like this Digex C50 which is great for day and night use. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching this review of the Bagara BMR rifle. Please like, subscribe and comment and don't forget to click the notification bell so you see the regular uploads from the shooting show. Thanks for watching, bye for now. Okay, that's it for this week. Hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching. Please remember to like us on the social media platforms and if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join. Looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show.